last couple of slides, I mean, neuroimaging, cranial ultrasound has false positive and false negative results. You may pick up cerebral edema and intracerebral hemorrhage due to difficult delivery may be picked up. The resistance index less than 0 0.55 at more than 24 hours is a poor prognostic factor. It shows that the autoregulation of the brain is not functioning. MRI is the most inflammatory tool, though it's not always available due to resource limitation and it's difficult, challenging to do it very early. If you do it very early, diffusion weighting may show infarct changes, but doing it too early may not have the changes you want. So uh, seven to 14 days after the insult is, if you want to do one MRI at that stage, and then you may need to do follow-up MRI depending on the findings and the clinical progress. But always be clear that the MRI abnormality doesn't always translate into clinical outcomes. And at the same time, a normal MRI doesn't mean the clinical outcome will be normal. So when you speak to the family, you have to be guarded at the same time, you can be uh, as uh, cautiously optimistic as you can, so you don't depress them. But MRI is only uh, reflection, it's not going to accurately predict. So the mild encephalopathy almost always recovers and uh, that's the reason the studies are difficult uh, for this group. Moderate encephalopathy, if the recovery happens by seven to 10 days, if the baby is sucking all feeds, there is no persisting seizures, uh, it's a good outcome and the overall 25% disability. The severe uh, grade three, when they become comatose for a period of time, it's almost always 100% disability. You do have the grade two to three where the babies are borderline comatose with persisting seizures, which recover by four or five days. That's usually a uh, little on the higher side, like 50% disability. 